Greetings, this is Sean, and today I'm going to be showing how to make a T-square from a metal ruler. I had a subscriber ask me about this, and so I thought I'd do this real quick. I did this a couple days ago. Anyway, um, I have an 8-inch ruler. She had a 6-inch ruler that she was wanting to make one out of, but I only have an 8-inch one, one, so those parts there were made and cut using the Cricut Maker, as you can see over there on the side. Um, I, I tried to draw using a pen to mark the the ruler on the one piece there, but uh, as you can see, it bled through. I probably should have used a gel pen instead of a instead of a uh, felt tip pen. But anyway, um, that's a magnet there, which will come in handy later. You'll see. And what I did was I measured the the width of my ruler was one inch exactly and so I made that center section there one inch as well and there's three inches obviously on both sides of it to make the T and that piece there that I'm holding is a 1 16th inch piece of uh, uh, plywood or actually it's basswood all those pieces are basswood that's another 1 16th that'll go underneath and those are two 1 32nd of an inch pieces that will go in between those two to sandwich them together which 1 32nd of an inch, it happens to be the same thickness as my ruler. So it worked out pretty well. And also the magnets that I'm using came out of an old hard drive and they happen to also be 1 32nd of an inch thick as well. So later on you'll see I'll be carving out a, uh, a hole in one of the pieces there for the magnet to go in to hold it in place. <coughs> So right now I'm just kind of I had had done the voice this voiceover while I was making this piece. Unfortunately, there was something wrong with the audio. I don't know what's going on with all my cameras. I always have issues with it. But anyway, here I'm just kind of showing how I'm going to put this together. Uh, those pieces there are three inches long, so that it'll all fit together nice and snug to hold it together nice and square. And I use my Cricut Maker, that way I have nice, sharp, clean cuts, clean 90 degree angles so that everything would be perfectly square once I get it all assembled. So right now I'm just marking where that piece needs to go, which I really didn't need to do, but uh, I did it anyway. That piece there is, it, it, it's a like rubber that keeps it from scooting you can see the difference how, of what it makes it keeps it from sliding across when you're working and um, I don't have any more left otherwise I would have taken that piece off but you'll get the idea here how it works by the way those slip anti-slip discs that you see there I, I got from Hobby Lobby in their sewing section is where I found them right by all the rubber mats and stuff So here I'm just trying to show how square it is and uh, how it's all going to get put together. I'm just wanting to make sure myself that it, everything is nice and square before I put it together. So that's the whole idea, is to make sure it's nice and square. <laughs> I'm showing that I'm going to put that magnet on that piece there to hold it in place once it's assembled. 
and that'll be able to slide up and down. So it will be adjustable as well. Just using tacky glue, as I always do. And, you know, spread it out here with my finger. And there you see a jar of sand. Sometimes I'll use salt, but I didn't have any salt upstairs with me. But uh, the sand, what it does is you put a little, little bit of it on the glue, and it when you press the two pieces together it keeps it from slipping and, and sliding when you clamp it together. Uh, salt is actually better than sand. You don't want to use too much um, you know because it'll it, then it won't have very good uh, adhesion with the glue. Just a small pinch of it and that will keep it from sliding once you start to clamp it. Like I say, salt works a little bit better because it's more square and uh, jagged and digs into the into the um, wood a little bit better. So here I'm just getting some clamps. And as you'll see here in a little bit, I should have added more clamps because I, I just, it, it ended up not gluing because I did put a little bit too much of the sand in it in place and uh, some of the sides didn't stick, but I fixed that later on. You'll see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this magnet here and um, I'm just going to center it, which... I do off camera accidentally, but I'm just trying to find out where the center point is for it right now. Which it doesn't have to be exactly center, it just needs to be within that one inch area, which, anyway, and that's going to go right there. And then basically I just drew a rough outline around it with a pencil. Here I'm going to use a small wood chisel to dig that out. Now you'll notice I flipped the chisel bevel side down. I was starting it bevel side up. I learned that if you have it be be bevel side down, it has a tendency to go straighter. If you put it bevel side up, you'll find that when you're carving it tends to dig into the wood and go down a lot more so if you put it bevel side down it'll it's a lot you have a lot more control over it and uh, so anyway and you always of course want to chisel with the grain of the wood not against the grain of the wood it's, it makes it a lot smoother a lot easier so anyway I was just digging that little hole and I'm going to use some uh, CA glue here to hold it in place and I'm just checking to make sure that it is nice and flat. You want it to be flat so that it doesn't interfere with the ruler going in, you'll see. And I'm debating on what glue to use. I was going to use E6000, but then I thought, no, it takes too long to dry, so I went ahead and used... That's a real thick gel CA glue, so I had plenty of time to be able to move the magnet around, which... <laughs> It was handy. And I did not use any accelerator this time for it. Uh, I usually use accelerator, but the accelerator tends to bubble up a lot, and I would have had to sand it all back down, so I just decided to do it this way. 
I have about 30 seconds of working time with that. So now what I'm doing is I'm using the ruler so that the magnet will go down and be attracted to it and help pull it down into the hole and into the CA glue a little bit. So. But I do end up using a small um, clamp to help it stay in place. Now back to this, the main part of it. I just need to glue the other side. See, and this is why I didn't even need to worry about making those lines. I end up using the ruler as a guide anyway. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that the glue didn't get into the area where the ruler is at, so... Just be real careful with it. I didn't want to use too much glue so I didn't have any squeeze that into it either. And of course here comes the sand again. It's a little bit... a lot of Now I'm going to over clamp this one because the other side did, you know, have issues with um, with warping and with uh, Here I'm just making sure that it didn't move over, which it did just a little tiny bit. But that was my fault for putting the one on the end instead of in the middle. So it's okay. That one's all done. I'm just making sure that it's sticky, which it is. Of course, it is. It's a magnet. I'm just going to let that cure for a little bit. I think I'll let it go for about five minutes. And I'm just checking to make sure that it hasn't changed. Still good. It's actually nice and tight. I had to run it across there just to make a little groove for it to actually slide a little bit easier, which is good. It means it's a nice tight fit. It won't wiggle. And that's the slot that it'll go through. Right there. showing that the magnet's holding it in place. And now for the final glue up. I 
I didn't do this, but I thought about putting a clear coat of varnish or wax or something on the final just to help keep it nice and clean and whatnot, but eh, I can always make another one. Cheap and easy to make. sure that the magnet's down. Now for the overclamping. was going to stay and not warp at all. So, let that go for... I let that cure, I let that cure for a good 10-15 minutes, maybe even, even as much as a half an hour, just to make sure that it was dry. Which it was. Turned out pretty good. Um, I end up... I don't think I show it on here, but I end up sanding the edge of it just to make sure that it's nice and clean and flat because it was off just a tiny bit but uh, I put down all the way to a sixteenth of an inch on those on those edge on the ruler part there and it is adjustable obviously I'm just showing that there's very little wiggle in it I was going to take that off, like I said, but I didn't have any more to replace it, so I left it on there. But you can see that it can slide up and down either end. I'm actually contemplating making another one that's a 45 degree angle for future use. We'll see. Anyway, like I said, I'm, I'm here I'm contemplating sanding it, which I guess I do show up here. It'd be easier to do on a belt sander, um, but I just use this block here with some, I think it's 120, no, 220 grit sandpaper, just to make it nice and even. Nice. I also saved my sawdust from there. I, I put it in a small jar that I've got to, uh, you, you mix the sawdust with the, the PVA glue, the white glue, and it makes a really good wood filler. I did that on another one of my videos before. So, anyway, that's it. As I always say, have a better day.